What's up guys? It is a cold one today, so I thought today we would unbox the brand new Predator 5000 inverter generator and also run it through its paces, do some tests. I'll show you the inside, the outside, all the plugs, the layout, um, some of the major features of this thing. Uh, we'll run it, we'll get some power to it, we'll run our RV, because obviously we're an RV channel for the most part. So that's why we bought this, and we'll see how it goes. Hope you enjoy it. Previously, if you've watched our channel before, if you're longtime watchers of ours, we had two 2000 Predator generators. Um, they were small suitcase type generators, and I would tie them together. Um, they would lead together, and there would be a single 50 amp plug. Um, it's nice because they're lightweight, um, but it's also two generators to take care of. So this is going to be nice because it's going to be one generator. It already has a 30 amp plug on it. Um, it's super quiet. It's got a remote start. It's got a handle that pulls out. Um, so it's there's going to be a lot of perks to having this over those two 2000 generators. There's a lot of perks of having the two 2000 generators over this. Uh, but for our purposes of the RV, our house, everything that we use generators for, I think this is going to work better for us. Now I will tell you completely honest, it took me a couple of attempts to get this thing onto this table. This is a heavy girl. So um, just like all generators that are roughly three, four or 5,000 watts and above, it's not going to be light. However, with the handle and everything, it does make it a little easier to deal with. Now I promise the talking is almost done. We're going to be cutting this thing out of here, but I do want to go over some of the major features real quick before I show it to you. So as you can see here, it says dual, dual fuel. That means this thing can run off of gasoline, it can run off of propane, which is really cool in the RV world because most all RVs have a big propane tank. So if you're ever in a bind um, or if you just want to run the generator cleaner, because um, propane does burn cleaner, you can run this thing off of propane and it's just a simple flick of a switch. There's no new jets, there's nothing crazy that you got to do to switch it over. Some of the other stuff is, is it does have the remote start. Um, it also has the handle that pulls out so you can pull it around um, like a suitcase. Um, it has a 5,000 peak watt, okay? So this is a Predator 5,000. Um, however, 5,000 is the peak. So the running watts is actually 3,900, which is not unusual for the generator world. This is a inverter generator. So unlike those open construction type generators, it's not gonna be loud. This should be fairly quiet. Since it is a inverter generator, it means that it is a pure sine wave generator. That means you can safely run like laptops, electronics, sensitive electronics off of this. Um, if you were to try to run that stuff off of like a construction type generator, the open frame, the loud ones, um, they do give power to run those things, but it is very dirty power. Meaning that if you were to actually put like a scope on the power, it's like, Doing this, you know, which will eventually burn out your sensitive electronics, such as like a phone, a laptop, etc. Um, this is sine wave, so it's got actually has an inverter built in that makes it as smooth as possible, so it's not causing harm to your electronics. And the cool thing is, is for the propane part of this, uh, Harbor Freight or Predator actually provide you the propane part of it. Um, so there's no going out and having to buy extra parts, which is really nice. Let's cut this thing out of here and see what we got. So first things first, um, they give you a manual as well as some, some jets. So we bought this down here uh, in Southeast Texas. So right out of the box, it should be fine. If you're like Colorado or some of those higher elevations in the US, they give you some uh, jets for the carburetor. That's to make it run better at those higher altitudes, which is nice. Here is a funnel. Um, I assume that this is for oil changes to make your life easier. Um, as you know, there's a lot compacted in these boxes. It's very tight spaces. So it's pretty cool that they give you a funnel that's specially designed for this generator. Here is a plug with alligator clips. So basically you would hook this into the generator, hook this up to the battery and you're charging batteries. That's pretty nifty. Here is the all important remote switch. Um, this comes in handy like if you're inside your RV or inside, you don't necessarily want to travel to uh, the generator, start it up or stop it. 
um, you can use this guy to do that. Here is the typical like spark plug wrench um, that they give you. So it's specially designed to go around the spark plug. It's got a hole right here with like a little bar that goes through it. And uh, you go there and that's how you can change your spark plug. So you don't have to figure out what socket size you need. You can just kind of keep this as a generator. It's a nice little touch. And here is the propane part of it. So there's gonna be a quick uh, disconnect plug on the front of the generator, which is gonna be this guy, like a twist lock. Like it's pretty much the same as um, if you were hooking up a propane burner to cook or whatever, it's the same kind of deal. Um, and here's the part that goes to the actual propane bottle itself. Um, so it's pretty cool that they provide you with this straight out of the jump. There's also like a clip on the front to store stuff. Um, so instead of having to buy this extra, it comes with it, which means that Predator has tested this with it and this is the right one. So you're not you're not running the risk of buying like an Amazon or eBay or whatever one, hoping that it works. Um, it's like Predator labeled, it's made for this generator. Um, so that's pretty cool, pretty cool addition and cost savings there. And here is the generator of the box. Um, I ended up having to take the box off the table and lifting it back up here. It is doable by yourself, but whew, so you can tell I'm a little bit out of breath. Pretty typical with Harbor Freight generators. This is being my third one now. Um, they give you the instructions, which you can keep on here or take off. Um, it just reminds you the steps, you know, fill gas, check oil, all those kinds of things. Um, on top here is a, a fuel gauge, tells you how much fuel there is. And uh, let, me, let me take you down a little level and I'll show you close up to the generator so you get an idea of what all's going on. So of course, uh, Harbor Freight gives you this little dummy guide basically, um, tells you where everything is, real nice. Um, gives you where everything is on the actual generator itself. AC receptacles, power switch, and start switch, etc. Gives you some stats on it. So just a really neat start guide here. Um, basically gives you the basics of the generator. All right, so let's look at the business end here. I added a light here, so maybe you can see a little bit better. Your battery switch. Um, this is nice, so you're not running down the battery all the time. This is basically like a battery disconnect. Um, so to use the engine start stop switch and all that stuff, you'll turn this on. Um, I'm certain that the battery is not going to be hooked up right now um, and shipping. So we'll probably have to hook that up here in a little bit. Start stop switch. You do have the option to crank it by hand, which I'll show you later. Um, but what if you don't want to or don't have to, then why not start it with the button here? On the right, you have the propane hookup. You'll take this cable here, the two brass pieces together. You'll plug it in and that's how you run off of propane. The cool thing about this generator is it has a simple switch, like I mentioned earlier, that switches it from propane to gasoline. So right now it is in the propane position and all we have to do is turn it over to the gasoline position and it will run off of the tank. The cool thing about this generator is it does have a fuel cutoff. So you just put it in the center position and it cuts off fuel. You'll notice that it says off in storage. So in theory, you run the generator, you put the switch to the off or storage position and let it run out of gas and you should be good for storage. Down here on the bottom left under the rubber cover is the 30 amp TT plug. TT stands for travel trailer. So you can plug it directly into this generator. The only thing is that most bigger RVs have a 50 amp plug. So if you do have an RV with a 50 amp plug, then all you need is a little adapter and they're not very expensive at all. Over here under the next rubber cover is two 110 plugs. Over here is the standard USB plug for charging your phone. It has the USB-A, but it also has the USB-C hookup. Under the next cover is where you will charge your DC batteries. And that will be the plug to alligator clips. Down here at the bottom is your red overload reset switch. So if you do overload the generator, this is how you will get it to reset so you can run it again. And right around it in these clear covers are your circuit breaker reset switches. So the first one on the left is for your RV plug. This is how you will reset it if you overload it. The next one is for your two 110 plugs down there. And the third one is for all, all of your DC stuff. And down here on the bottom right is where you will parallel two generators together. So if you had another one of these, you could hook them together and get 10,000 watts. Last but not least is the display screen. Here you'll see voltages, amperages, 
timers, those kinds of things. You'll also have a low oil light, overload light, etc. On the top left is a CO monitor. Legally, all generators have to have it these days. If you're in an area that's not well ventilated and a lot of the fumes are coming back and this rises above around 50 parts per million or so, it's gonna go off and shut the generator down. So right now it's got a plastic cover on it because I, it's just brand new, but there's a button here, you press it, this handle comes out several positions and allows you to treat this generator as a suitcase. On this side of the generator, this would be the left side if you're standing in front of it. This is a important panel because this is where all your maintenance is gonna be done. So um, one good thing about the 5000 is they've improved upon their previous generation of generators on um, the 2000, the 1800, the 3500. Um, a lot of those generators required tools to get into it, which was pretty annoying. Um, on these, they just have these little twist lock things that you undo, and then you just take this panel off. And so I, ha I have not needed a tool yet to get inside this thing. Um, in here is the engine, the business end of the engine. So you have the spark plug, the air filter, um, those kinds of things, um, the carburetor. There's even a, let's say you're in a cold environment and the automatic choke is not enough or you need to modify it yourself um, for your climate. They do provide a manual choke. It's like an override. Um, so it bypasses the automatic choke. And if you want to be anal and drain the fuel from the carburetor, of course you have that option here. So this is a lot of your maintenance side, if not all of the maintenance side of your generator in this panel that you don't need any tools to access, which is really nice. On the back here, there's not much to see. Um, basically, the exhaust is back here. Now, they create a space in between the rear baffle here and the actual exhaust pipe. I think that's pretty smart, so it keeps people from burning yourself. Um, it also gives you a lot of the engine information on the bottom here, on this little tag. It gives you what kind of oil it needs, how much of it, all those different kinds of things. It also tells you RPM range, the frequency of the generator, it's a single phase, um, voltage, amps, all those kinds of things are right here on the back. That's really nice. So for example, this is telling you it needs 0.64 quarts, 0.64 quarts of 10W30. So that's pretty cool. You don't have to remember this. Um, you also get to see the wheels that are down here. Um, and that's what you're going to be rolling it around on. Over here on this side, this is more maintenance area. You have your battery here, which actually becomes disconnected when you buy it. But it's all it is are these quick disconnects right here. And so if you actually want to save your battery, you can leave it disconnected like this. Or if you want to use it, you can hook it back up. That simple. Um, so your battery's up here. This is where your starter motor is going to be. This is where you'll drain and fill the oil. So this is your drain. They have it actually in a nice belly right here. And this is where you fill. And everything is big, so you don't need a tool to take off or do anything. And of course, just like the other sides, this panel comes off and on by just pushing it into place and unscrewing or screwing these right here. So no tools required to take it apart. And of course, over here, we have your handle in case the battery's dead and you want to manually start it or need to manually start it. So without further ado, let's go outside and test this thing out. Before I do, I did want to mention one last thing real quick, and that is this. So if you do run off of propane rather than gas, just keep in mind that the rating for propane goes down. Um, propane does not burn as hot as gas, so you little bit, lose a little bit of horsepower. Um, it does run cleaner. So typically if you run, something runs off of propane, the carburetor and all the thing, all the components are very, very clean, but it's not as efficient as gas. So generally the power decreases and that is definitely the case here. So you go from 3,900 running watts to 3,600 running watts if you run off of propane. Not a bad loss actually. So we got the generator outside now. I actually added the 0.64 quarts of 10W30 into the generator now. And it's time to try to fire it up. Um, I have filled it up with gas. It's about three quarters full. So let's see if this thing will fire. Um, this thing has never ran before. So let's see how it does out of the gate. So first thing we're gonna do 
um, let's give the generator power. So we're going to put on the put the power toggle switch to the on position. Make sure that the economy throttle position is in the off position. Um, that way it can go up to full RPMs and warm up. Um, I have the selector switch on gasoline. So typically you would have it in storage. I have turned it to gasoline because that's what I filled it up with. And we should be ready to start. So the little label here says two times. So let's press it once. Yep, there's the power. Let's press it a second time. Wow, started right up. How nice is that? I don't even have any economy position. That's really surprising. There is the economy position. Man, that sticker is super quiet. That's really shocking. That might even be quieter than my 2000s that I had. So on the front, as we're sitting here letting it warm up, um, it's giving us the power outage. So the screen earlier, the output is giving you the voltage. So 125 volts. That way, as you start to load this up, it is a generator. You're making sure that you're not dropping below the recommended voltage for your application. So if it starts getting dangerously low, you're loading the generator up too much, you can see it on that screen. Of course, if it gets overloaded, the generator itself should know that and go into the overload mode. I cannot get over how quiet this generator is. I don't know if you can get this on video because I'm using a microphone, but it is stupid quiet. Now you're on the business end where the exhaust is, and it's still not loud. So let me give you a little bit close up of the screen here. You see the 125? There's your voltage. There's your amp draw. So right now we have nothing hooked up, so there's zero amp draw. So it gives you AC and DC draw. It's your runtime. As you can see, there's no runtime. And back to your voltage. I mean, guys, this thing is like dumb quiet. I'm I'm in shock. As you know, if you've been watching the channel, I've tested the Honda versions of these generators. And man, this thing is uh, very, very comparable. So let's check the gas shutoff now. So we should be able to turn this to the off position. As you can see, the generator is still running. At this point, it should have cut off gas to the carburetor and it should die. So let's see how long it takes for it to do that. This is perfect for those times where you need to store the generator and you want to run the gas out of the carburetor because everybody knows gas these days is, well, it sucks. So the E85 will gum up a carburetor. So if you can actually run E85 free gas in it, ethanol free gas, that would be best. But of course, if you're in an area where you can't, this feature is nice because it won't gum up the carburetor. As everybody knows, the jets and carburetors do not like fuel being used these days. There you go, it's starting to die right now. She's trying. There she goes, she died. So let's test out one of the main features why you'd want to get this, um, and that's for mobility. So you would want to pull out your suitcase handle here, pick it up. Of course I'm in grass, so it's not the easiest. See if the camera will actually track this time. Let's 
you can see that the suitcase handle makes it really nice. It was a heavy girl, like I said earlier. So the fact that you can move this around like a suitcase, man, very nice. I did forget to mention earlier, um, the front wheel here does have a lock. You simply flip it up like this. If you're on a surface, it locks it in. You can't roll it. So that's a nice security feature. It's just on that one wheel. So keep that in mind on this front left one here. So let's actually draw down the generator with something. Let's put a load on it. Uh, we're going to start out with this heater here. Uh, as everybody knows, these heaters love to draw some electricity. Not exactly efficient. So let's see what she does. So we're going to open up the 110 and plug it in here. Heater's not on, so shouldn't draw any power right off the way. Let's give this thing some gasoline back. Put her in economy mode. That way you can hear it ramp up. Let's turn on the heater and see what happens. Man, I'm having to put my hand in front of it because I don't even hear the uh, <laughs> I don't even hear generator ramping up. And this thing's on high. This is a 15 or 1800 watt heater, so it's not a small one. I mean, it's a pretty decent sized heater. And it's definitely working, it's hot. So as the heater is still working, let's look down at the power and see what's going on here. So we dropped to 123 volts. Currently pulling 12.1 amps. 1483 watts, that's about right. I said it's about a 1500 watt heater. So that's about right. And 23 volts. So it didn't even ramp up. So we're gonna have to find something a little bit stronger to actually make this thing ramp up a little bit. So here is our RV. Um, it is a fifth wheel Durango, a 34 foot. And we are going to test it and put the load onto this generator, which is exactly what we bought this for. So this is a larger RV, so it does have the 50 amp connection. I have an adapter that makes it go from 50 to 30, which is a three prong plug. So all I gotta do is plug this guy in. Let's start it up. So right now I have nothing on. Um, if it ramps up, like the RPMs ramp up a little bit, it's gonna be because of it, the uh, charging of the battery um, and maybe some small items like clocks things like that but right now I don't have the AC on the heaters not on etc so so right now we're at 124 volts and we're pulling 3.6 amps so I'm suspecting the amp draw is charging the battery on board you know because the RVs do come with a onboard charger so let's see if turning on the heater will ramp up the generator because like I mentioned earlier it's quite cold. Alright here we go turn on the heater. So as you can probably hear the generator ramped up. Let's see what it's pulling so 15.1 amps so the heater in the RV is pulling some amperage now. 1848 watts. 122 volts. So I feel like the generator is still not ramped up. Like it's ramped up a little bit, but not all the way. But as you can see, we'll easily run um, an electric heater inside your RV. So one thing I mentioned earlier, if you remember, this is a dual fuel. So I have the generator hooked up to the propane in my RV. So as you can see, I have changed the selector from gas over to the propane selection. I have hooked up the quick disconnect to the generator right there. And as you can see, the cable is going up to 
the RB propane. Forgive that noise. That is a tree hitting my RV cover and scraping. It's a god awful noise. I know. I apologize. But let's see if this thing starts up on propane. Started right up. Pretty neat how you can just quickly change it from propane between gasoline and propane back and forth and it starts up that easily. I did no preparation between switching between the two fuels. Pretty neat. Here is the Predator regulator hooked into the propane tank. So one of the last things I wanted to show was uh, the control. So as you can see, Charlotte is now enjoying the show out there. So let, here's a little, come on, focus. Here's a little keypad. So I think all you got to do, press this twice. And there you go. How cool is that? And turn it off, it's the same thing. Just press it once. So overall, guys, only time's going to be able to tell. Um, this is just an initial impressions, unboxing, a little bit of testing. Um, I think there's going to be some longevity stuff that will need to be tested. So maybe I'll do another review in like a year or so. Like, hey, I've had it a year. How's it been? And we will do a review then. But otherwise, I am really impressed with this generator for the features. Um, the equivalent generator in a Honda is several thousand dollars. This was a little over a thousand. I actually bought it with no coupon or anything. I sold my two thousands, used the money from it, and got this one. So, overall, pretty impressed. Initial impressions are very good with this. So, hope you enjoyed this review and come back for more content. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, like this video, comment on it. Really helps us out a lot. We have day jobs here, people. We're just trying to survive. So. If you feel kind enough to help us out by subscribing, liking this video, we'd really appreciate it. Alright guys, see you in the next one. Bye.